लेसन फोर प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ इकोलॉजी पार्ट वन हेलो लर्नर्स इन आवर प्रीवियस प्रोग्राम वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट हाउ आवर अर्थ केम इन एग्जिस्टेंस एंड वॉट कंडीशन फॉर अवेलेबल फॉर द सर्वाइवल ऑफ लाइफ ऑन आवर अर्थ वी हैव ऑल्सो लर्न हाउ ह्यूमन्स हैव बीन इंट्रेक्टिंग विद द इन्वायरमेंट रैपिड एक्सपेंशन ऑफ इंडस्ट्राइजेशन हैज रिजल्टेड इन डिप्लीशन ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज एंड पॉल्यूशन ऑफ द इन्वायरमेंट द वेरी सर्वाइवल ऑफ ह्यूमन्स इज नाउ थ्रेटन बिकॉज ऑफ इन्वायरमेंटल डिग्रेडेशन अ सिंपल चेंज इन द इन्वायरमेंट कैन हैव ए प्रोफाउंड इफेक्ट ऑन ऑल लिविंग थिंग्स द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ वन स्पीशीज कैन मीन द डेथ ऑफ मैनी अदर स्पीशीज वी कैन नॉट कंट्रीब्यूट टू हार्म आवर इन्वायरमेंट ड्यू टू ए पुअर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ इकोलॉजी दैट इज आवर सराउंडिंग्स वी कैन टेक वन एग्जाम्पल दैट humans continue to destroy wildlife habitats in order to build cities and industries this behavior if unchanged could someday render the earth uninhabitable thankfully here is an opportunity to better understanding ecology for this you have to understand some important concept of ecology i am nilam gupta welcome you in this program so today's topic is principle of ecology of the module 2 title ecological concepts and issues for this discussion we have with us dr aruna mohan associate professor retired from university of delhi welcome you madam thank you neelam now let me first discuss the objectives of today's lesson it starts with define the term ecology explain the relationship between organism and its habitat with a special mention of the human species recognize the levels of ecological organizations from organism that is individual to population community ecosystem bio and biosphere differentiate between habitat and niche describe the concept of species and explain the basic idea of adaptation evolution and extinction what is meant by ecology who coined this term and what is the derivation of term ecology then answer can be in simple words as interrelated relationship of an organism with abiotic and biotic factors of environment coming to concept of ecology again the term ecology was first coined in 1869 by german biologist ernst haeckel it has been derived from two greek words oikos means home or estate and logos means study ecology may be defined as a scientific study of the relationship of living organisms with each other and with their environment in short you and your environment the emphasis is on relationships between organisms and the components of the environment namely abiotic that is non living and biotic that is living ecological levels of organization ecological level of organization spectrum emphasizing the interaction of living that is biotic and non living that is abiotic components leading to the formation of system at each level for example a community that is biotic with its biotic components energy and matter example a community that is biotic with its abiotic components like energy and matter makes ecosystem this slide shows levels of organizations from individual to the biosphere in nature it starts with individual coming to population then to community ecosystem biome and finally the biosphere ecological levels of organization we continue the first one is organism that is individual and that is considered the basic unit of study second is population dear learners these definitions are very important so what is population a group of organisms consisting of a number of different populations 
that live in defined area and interact with each other. The third one is community, a group of organisms consisting of a number of different species that live in an area and interact with each other. Fourth is ecosystem, a communities of organisms and their physical environment interacting as an ecological unit. The fifth one is biome, a large community unit characterized by a major vegetation type and the associated fauna found in a specific climatic region is biome. These refer basically to terrestrial areas. Aquatic systems are divided into distinct life zones on the basis of salinity. The sixth one is biosphere. A study of human activities affecting the earth like global climate, ozone hole, etc. Coming to types of ecological studies. First one is study of the form, physiology, behavior, distribution and adaptation of organism in relation to environment. The second one is a study of interaction between population and intra-specific relationships, a study of structure and composition of community and interspecific interactions between themselves, between members of community. Next is a study of the community in relation to the structure of its ecosystem, nutrient cycle, climate, energy flow, etc. is studied. Habitat and organism. Habitat is the physical environment in which an organism lives. Each organism has particular requirements for its survival and lives where the environment provides for those needs that is water, food and shelter. The features of the habitat can be represented by its structural components namely space, food, water and shelter. This slide shows the interrelationship. Habitat is in the center which must have food, water and shelter for an organism to survive. Habitat and its types. Habitat is the physical environment in which an organism lives. Each organism has particular requirements for its survival and lives where the environment provides for those needs that is water, food and shelter. Earth has four major habitats, terrestrial, freshwater, eustachian and ocean. In this slide you can see the types of habitat. You can see terrestrial where you can see grass and trees. Then you can see freshwater there you can see a river, then marine you can see and eustachian where river meets the sea. A habitat may support many different species having similar requirements. For example, a single ocean habitat may support a whale, a seahorse, seal, phytoplankton and many other kinds of organisms. This slide shows the examples. The human gut is the habitat of a tapeworm if there is a tapeworm in the gut while rotting bread or log a habitat of a fungus. Coming to niche and the organism. In nature, many species occupy the same habitat but they perform different functions. The functional characteristics of a species in its habitat is referred to as niche in that common habitat. So what is niche or how can we define niche? A niche is unique for a species while many species share the habitat. No two species in a habitat can have the same niche. This is because if two species occupy the same niche, they will compete with one another until one is displaced. In nature, many species occupy the same habitat but they perform different functions. The functional characteristics of a species in its habitat is referred to as niche in that common habitat. Habitat of a species is like its address, that is where it lives. Whereas niche can be thought of its profession, that is 
activities and responses specific to the species. Habitat, the address or home of an organism that is the place where it lives. Niche is an occupation of an organism in the community. In this, the tree is habitat of several insects, whereas each insect has a different niche. Lace bug occupies top canopy of the tree. Moth larvae feed on the shoots. Serpentine leaf miners require surface of the leaf for feeding and the white grubs. Trophic niche is roots of the tree. In this slide, you can see different niches for different organisms on the same tree. The term niche means the sum of all the activities and relationships of a species by which it uses the resources in its habitat for its survival and reproduction. A niche is unique for a species while many species share the habitat. No two species in a habitat can have the same niche. The most important resources in the niche of animals are food and shelter while in case of plants they are moisture and nutrients, phosphorus and nitrogen. This figure shows the niche of human beings. You can see human in the center and that is its niche and what all things are seen around the human. Now we will take up our next topic in today's discussion that is adaptation. Learners, you know that the coconuts cannot grow in a desert while a camel cannot survive in an ocean. How do they arise in nature? Species formation. Yes, every organism is suited to live in its particular environment. Each organism is adapted to its particular environment. Adaptation is thus the appearance or behavior or structure or mode of life of an organism so that allows it to survive in a particular environment. Now let us discuss adaptation in detail. An adaptation is thus the appearance or behavior or structure or mode of life of an organism that allows it to survive in a particular environment. Desert animals have raised their body above the ground by having long legs. You can see clearly in the slide, a camel is shown. Example of basic adaptations help animals and plants to survive in their respective environment. Let us recall some examples of basic adaptations. For aquatic adaptation, presence of gills and fins in fish for aquatic life. In aquatic flowering plants, the absence of wood formation is highly reduced. Root systems are adaptations. Adaptations can be observed in a structure, behavior or in physiology of an organism have been produced and adaptations have a genetic basis and thus adaptations have developed over many generations to help a species survive successfully in its environment. Adaptation for birds. Shape of bird's beak, the thickness or thinness of fur, presence of feathers and wings in birds, evergreen and deciduous nature of trees, presence or absence of thorns on leaves and stems. Can we discuss in brief how these adaptations arise in organisms? As mentioned earlier, adaptations have a genetic basis and evolution plays a role in this process. Let us try and understand how. Now we will discuss about species and variation. A species. A species is defined as a group of similar populations of organisms whose members are capable of interbreeding and to produce fertile offsprings, that means children. A tiger, a lion, a lotus and a rose are examples of different species. Every species has a specific name understood by people all over the world. 
humans belong to a species of Homo sapiens. Only members of the same species can interbreed to produce fertile offsprings. Every species has its own set of genetic characteristics that makes the species unique and different from other species. However, species are generally composed of a number of distinct populations which freely interbreed even though they appear to be different in appearance. Difference in color of skin, type of hair, curly or straight, eye color, blood type among different ethnic groups represent variation within human species. Similarly, different shape and size of cows, dogs and cats etc. are examples of variation within each of these species. In plants, tall and short pea varieties, various shape and size of brinjal exhibit among these plant species. Variations are produced as a result of chance mutation. Competition and natural selection determines as to which variation will succeed and survive. Those variations that enable a species to survive in the struggle for existence are encouraged and promoted. In plants, one can observe wide variation in size and shapes of mangoes, brinjals, etc. Coming to topic evolution, a valid theory of evolution was propounded by Charles Darwin and Alfred Wallace in 1859. This theory has been extended in the light of progress in genetics and is known as neo-Darwinism. According to this theory, organisms tend to produce more offspring that can be supported by the environment. Organisms they produce in far larger numbers that can be supported by nature. Natural selection selects among the variations that is genes that help the organism to adapt to its environment. Such organism gets to grow up to adulthood and reproduces thus pass on their genes suitable adaptations to the next generation. Evolution thus results in adaptation and diversity of species. This slide shows the speciation starting with founder population, then overcrowding, then some mutation leading to variations, then in environment 1 it will grow differently that is geographical isolation, then there will be environment 2. Since there is reproductive isolation, so there will be two different species formed, species 1 and species 2. Speciation, process by which new species arise and evolution is the mechanism by which speciation is brought about. A species comprises of many population. Different populations often get isolated due to geographic barrier, examples mountains, rivers, oceans, etc. When a population that was interbreeding otherwise gets separated into two completely isolated populations by a barrier which prevents their interbreeding and gene exchange. Ecological isolation caused by differences in temperature, humidity, pH etc. in the environment of the two populations. Mutations occur randomly in isolated populations giving rise to new variation within each subpopulation of these mutations, those that help to adapt to the environment are reproduced in greater numbers due to natural selection. In other words, since no two environments are identical, natural selection pressure also operates in different ways depending upon local conditions such as climate, diseases, predation, predators, etc. Natural selection affects each subspecies in different way. So, different variations get selected, established. 
with passage of time the sub populations became very different and get isolated reproductively and can no longer interbreed later when the barrier is removed the sub population are still not able to interbreed and are still not able to interbreed and become two distinct species there is an example of formation of new species speciation species formation you can see two different kinds one is kaibab squirrel north rim and abbot squirrel south rim it is very good example speciation that is species formation now about these two squirrels which i have just now shown i am giving you the details an example of speciation is seen in the two species of squirrels kaibab squirrels and abbot squirrel that live opposite sides of grand canyon the two squirrels populations became separated species about 1 million years ago due to the changed course of river colorado the original population was split by the river and the environment on the two sides very different in this slide you can see variation and origin of new species you can see different beaks a beak to eat the insect or to eat the bark or to dig the soil and take out the insects so different kinds of beaks so different kind of species adaptations on the hawaiian islands a single finch like ancestor gave rise to about 40 different species of honey creepers each is specialized in bill shape and size as selected by its particular micro habitat and diet colors may have evolved in response to sexual selection coming to and the important topic extinction ever since life evolved on earth new species better suited or adapted to the environment have appeared and older less successful forms have died or became extinct extinction is generally a natural occurrence it means that dying out of a variety of a species the primary reason for these extinctions is environmental change or biological competition extinction occurs when species cannot evolve fast enough to cope with the changes taking place in their environment extinctions and speciation go side by side less successful forms become extinct it is generally natural occurrence the primary reason is environmental change or biological competition species become extinct when they cannot evolve with the changing environment fast enough humans to contribute by deforestation environmental degradation etc we can say human interference is enhancing the natural process of extinction of species this slide shows flatfish the fossil and picopteris again the fossil which have become extinct extinction occurs when species cannot evolve fast enough to cope with the changes taking place in their environment many species have gone extinct during geological history of the earth fossils are the preserved remains of animals plants and other organism that lived in the geological past thank you dr arena mohan for sharing information related to principles of ecology before we wrap up we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learned ecology may be defined as a scientific study of the relationships between each other and with their environment the term ecology was coined by ernest haeckel in 1869 ecology encompasses study of individual organisms population community ecosystem biome and biosphere which form the various level of ecological organization habitat is the physical environment in which an organism lives it corresponds to address of an organism niche refers to the functional position of a species in its habitat 
species is a form of populations whose individual members are capable of interbreeding with each other to produce fertile offspring evolution is the change which gives rise to new species mutation and recombination are sources of variation or differences in the genetic makeup or gene pool of a species natural selection is the mechanism proposed by darwin and wallis which interacts with variations to cause greater reproduction of the genes which help in adaptive to the environment thus evolution results in adaptation evolution leads to speciation or formation of new species isolation is the factor which supports specimen isolation is of two types that is geographical isolation and reproductive isolation extinction may occur due to catastrophic events in nature or due to human activities so this is all about concept of ecology different levels of ecological organization habitat and niche concept of speciation and basic ideas about adaptation evolution and extinction thank you